So, ladies and gentlemen, HLG, HDR Videos, Making HDR Content. This video is brought to you by the Lumix S1H and uh, HDR. It's shot in HLG. Um, what is HDR? Why does it look so amazing? And how to shoot it? What to, uh, what to do? And blah, blah, blah. Um, this video could be a very long video, but this video is basically HLG for dummies because you have not so much time and you are not willing to watch a two hour how to uh, shoot HLG and stuff. And actually is it ultra easy in my opinion. Um, the fundamental steps are recording in HLG, um, editing in a in a, editing on a normal display and exporting in HDR. That's it, it can be a very scientific topic, but I don't want to steal you so much money. Here. So, record in HLG. A lot of cameras have this little option built in Hybrid Log Gamma. It's developed by the BBC and it's for streaming Rec. 709 and um, a bigger logarithmic gamut curve that you can have both worlds because HLG works also on a Rec. 709 display. Like Dolby Vision Atmos HDR, blah, 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 doesn't work on a Rec. 709 color space, but HLG does. So you can record an HLG and when you then um, experience, I don't want to make HDR video, you can also use the footage. Um, use then in your editing software. I will not go into ultra details here, but um, you have then basically to convert the preview to your monitor. If you have then an HDR monitor, like your phone basically, you can then edit and, and recording, and, uh, you can record and edit your HDR footage on your phone most of the times. And HDR um, has more dynamic range. Explanation. A normal Rec. 709 color space has basically um, the values from 0 to 100 when it comes to the brightness and HDR has basically from 0 to 10,000 brightness. That is much more information in light in this codec, in this gamut curve and you have also um, much more dynamic range. Your sensor cannot capture infinite more dynamic range. Your sensor has a fixed dynamic range but the uh, um, the, the video do you deliver has more dynamic range, more nits, and that's the thing. The brightness of your screen you have here in front of you is measured in nits. For instance, when you have then a 300 nits monitor that will look very dim in harsh sunlight. If you have then a 1000 nits monitor that will look good in bright sunlight. It's basically how bright the image on the screen can be. And HDR content can be from 0 to 10,000 nits. Well, there are no monitors yet that can display 10,000 nits that would be very, very bright. But 1,000 nits and more are common. Your, your screen on your wall when it's an HDR TV has probably 700 around the nits. Would be amazing if you have a 1,000 nits display on your, on, your, on your home, but you will likely don't have it. So, to make it easy here, set your display then to a conversion from like HLG to Rec. 709. Then you can monitor the image completely, then it's not burnt out. Look in the waveform that your highlights are not so ultra clipped. A lot of people say don't have clipped highlights and not in anything, but I always say expose for the thing you want to see. If you want to show the sky, then, ex then expose for the sky. Um, it will, everything will then be a little bit darker and um, if you want to expose for something else, I know, do you want to don't burn out the sky, then the image looks like this, but if you want to then expose for the dark parts, the image will look like this. Um, that's, that's the thing what you want to display. You don't have infinite dynamic range saying, well, save every highlight is not the thing. And when does HLG or HDR delivery look good? in nature, in color-rich environments, in like in the zoo for instance, then looks HLG amazing. HLG doesn't look nice when it, it's a cloudy, rainy day. HLG looks nice at night because you have a lot of lights and a lot of contrast. There is the thing where HLG and basically HDR looks nice. So then, um, in easy, you shot HLG, 
you monitor your image on your screen you have in a Rec. 709 color space and then you export. Set your export settings. I can show it here in Vegas to um, HDR10 or HLG and then your color space needs to be 10 bit. Um, it has to set the value maybe to 1000 nits. You can also export to 2000 nits and 4000 nits. But like I said, there is hardly any monitor that can display so much brightness. And your, your camera then, um, your camera can record then up to 10,000 nits. So you can export up to 10,000 nits, but no monitor can see this. So export maybe to 1000 nits and then you're safe. It will be very stressful for your editing machine because exporting in HDR takes a huge hit on your GPU and your CPU that needs that needs a little bit more juice because you're delivering more data, more information, and you can also um, download, uh, upload directly to YouTube. In Vegas, for instance, I edit all my stuff in Vegas. Why? Because I am paid by Vegas every month. No, no, just kidding. I'm not sponsored by Vegas. I'm just, I was sponsored by Vegas, but I still like this software and I'm a Vegas ambassador and Vegas is amazing for HDR workflow. Um, it um, provides you even with the function that when you pull one clip into the timeline that it automatically changes the setting of the whole interface to HDR grading. Um, that's ultra cool and handy in my opinion. It doesn't make your life ultra complicated where you have to then set a thousand color spaces and the right form and blah blah blah. It does this for you. It is nice and easy and that's why um, and powerful and strong it can it can export so many different things, P, Q, etc. That's not a ultra highly detailed video here, but I can tell you, um, again, record an HLG, monitor your screen on Rec. 709 color space because you probably have a Rec. 709 screen and then export in HDR10, for instance. That's it. That's a nice little short video. I like HDR. See you in the next video. My name is Paul. We see you in the next video.